Today, we're talking about the BMW K100, the first revolutionary four-cylinder BMW. In light of the success of the new BMW K1200S, it's worth looking back to the first time a BMW four-cylinder, the legendary K100, burst onto the market more than 20 years ago, marking the start of a new era for the Bavarian brand and stirring both surprise and controversy. It was 1983 when, at the Paris Motor Show, BMW amazed its audience, which closely associated the brand with the Boxer engine. No one would have imagined that BMW, already a symbol of high displacement engines, could abandon that classic twin-cylinder layout in favour of an innovative inline four-cylinder engine, the beating heart of the new K100. The choice surprised many. An engine clearly derived from automotive technology, yet pushing engineering boundaries further by positioning the cylinders horizontally. The real surprise was that this engine, with two valves per cylinder, arranged in a way that almost resembled a four-valve architecture due to the specific inclination, aimed not only at improving specific power, while guaranteeing a significant level of performance, attention shifted for the first time to two aspects rarely considered back then. Reducing environmental pollution and achieving an impeccable level of quietness, faithfully aligned with the rigour of the Munich-based company. These choices divided the enthusiast community. Some lamented the uncompromising sportiness of previous models, while others embraced this evolution as an ingenious milestone, recognising in the new model a machine on two wheels. In the design phase, there was no lack of intent to preserve the brand's motorcycling soul, avoiding a bike that would look like a car in disguise. To understand BMW's leap, we must take a brief step back. At the end of the 1970s, the motorcycle market was in crisis, while BMW's automotive sector was experiencing spectacular growth. Many thought that the Bavarian company would abandon motorcycles to focus exclusively on cars, and indeed, for about a decade, production was limited to minor updates to existing models, insufficient to justify industrial continuity. It was then that President Eberhard von Kuenheim decided to make a change, reorganising the entire motorcycle division in 1978. Richard Heidenreich was put in charge of development, Klaus Volker Gevert was assigned to design, and Martin Probst, a close collaborator of Paul Roche, a prominent figure in Formula One engines, was tasked with engine design. It was Martin Probst who created the engine for the new K100, marking the beginning of a technical revolution. The first project of the new team materialised in a motorcycle called Module, a name chosen to signify the adoption of a modular architecture featuring two, three and four-cylinder inline engines arranged longitudinally and tilted. A twin-cylinder prototype was even showcased at the 1978 Cologne Motor Show, but after careful consideration, BMW chose to abandon the module concept as it seemed lacking in originality. A more distinctive touch was needed, so they thought of an engine setup that would partly echo the boxer layout with horizontally arranged cylinders. The first experiment involved installing a Peugeot 106 engine on a motorcycle frame due to its inclined cylinder arrangement. The result convinced the technicians and sparked a new project, which included a 1300cc four-cylinder labelled K4 and an 800 to 1000cc three-cylinder labelled K3, where the letter K stood for compact, indicating the compact nature of the engine transmission system. The final project, eventually realised by Probst, saw a reduction in displacement in favour of a long-stroke design, making the engine transmission unit more compact and functional. This innovative system, set to define the future of BMW motorcycles, was patented in 1979 as the BMW Compact Drive System, thus opening a new and memorable chapter in the history of the Munich-based company. From the outset, it was clear that the beating heart and radical innovation of the BMW K100 lie in its engine. 
We're talking about a four-cylinder inline engine mounted with the crankshaft in a longitudinal position, a design choice that required ingenuity to keep the block's overall length in check. This is why BMW opted for a deliberately long stroke-to-bore ratio, with a bore of 67 millimeters and a stroke of 70 millimeters. The cylinders, crafted in a single lightweight alloy block, feature an internal silicon carbide reinforcement, the Scanimet technology, to ensure optimal durability. The crankshaft, designed with robustness and precision, rests on five bearings and includes well-calibrated counterweights. The last shoulder, cylindrical and equipped with a helical gear, transmits motion to the output shaft. This shaft, positioned below the crankshaft, drives the five-speed gearbox via the clutch and powers the oil pump at the front. Above, the crankshaft gear drives a 460-watt three-phase alternator and, through a reduction system, receives power from the starter motor. The distribution system is equally refined. There are two overhead camshafts with two valves per cylinder, arranged at a narrow 38-degree angle. Transmission is achieved through tappets, with valve return managed by helical springs, while a chain at the front with guiding rails controls the rotation of the camshafts. Fuel injection is managed by a Bosch Elegiotronic system combined with a digital electronic ignition that cuts off fuel flow during deceleration. An electronic limiter controls ignition at 8,600 RPM and stops fuel flow beyond 8,750 RPM, while the exhaust, made from special steel, is arranged in a four-into-one configuration. The 90 horsepower developed at 8,000 RPM is indeed impressive, but it was not the sole goal of the project. This engine was designed to reduce noise, limit emissions and ensure manageable torque even at low speeds, qualities that provide the K100 engine with exceptional progression, making it fully usable even in higher gears with torque that begins to assert itself above 5,000 RPM. The K100 introduces a new concept for BMW, the engine suspended in a tubular trellis frame. The front fork is a telehydraulic system developed with Fichtel and Sachs with generously sized 41mm stanchions and a large section hollow wheel axle, providing remarkable torsional rigidity. At the rear, there is a single-sided swing arm made of lightweight alloy that incorporates the drive shaft. Anchored to the gearbox housing, the elastic element with a gas shock absorber is positioned on the right side of the vehicle and fixed to the trellis frame at the top. The lightweight alloy wheels with spokes are equipped with 100 by 90 V18 tyres in the front and 130 by 90 V17 in the rear. The Brembo braking system is also high quality with dual 285mm discs in the front and a single disc of the same diameter in the rear. The front fairing, in addition to a distinctive design, is remarkably effective against the wind. The windshield includes an upper deflector to divert airflow and the handguards incorporate turn signals. The K100 is credited with a top speed of 215 km per hour, a figure confirmed and consistently achievable according to tests from leading specialty magazines. Its power and the aerodynamics of the fairing make it an example of engineering aimed at high performance with the versatility of a true high-ranking tourer. The BMW K100 is not only an innovative motorcycle, but also a symbol of an industrial adventure launched from the new state-of-the-art Berlin Spandau plant. Officially inaugurated in March 1984 in the presence of President Kohl, the plant was already in full swing, producing the K100 in increasing numbers. There were challenges, of course. In the spring of 1984, a metal workers' strike threatened to halt deliveries to the US market where the four-cylinder had just been launched. To avoid major delays, an airlift was even organized to ensure overseas deliveries, underscoring the strategic importance of the K100 for BMW. Alongside the base model, identified simply as K100, BMW introduced the sporty RS and special RT versions in 1983, both with fairings that offered a higher degree of protection than the standard version. The RS model's lines were performance-focused, 
providing the rider with an impeccable aerodynamic profile, while the RT enriched the offering with ideal comfort and protection for long-distance travel. In 1986, the LT version was introduced, designed for extensive touring, complementing the RT to cater to the needs of the most demanding travellers. The RT model, the subject of our analysis, also stands out for significant mechanical enhancements. Among these, a redesigned airbox to improve engine response and a more comprehensive instrument panel. The seat, crafted for comfort, features an anatomical shape and two large rear bags complete the setup, offering the essential capacity and practicality for touring. In these few lines, it's impossible to outline the full history of a model destined for a long career, but it's essential to mention some milestones starting in 1986. The K100 became available with ABS, a technological breakthrough for braking control, and in 1989, the sporty K1 debuted. This new version, with four valves per cylinder, increased power to 100 HP at 8,000 RPM, reaching a top speed of 237 kmh. This confirms BMW's ongoing evolution, committed to enhancing both performance and comfort always in service of motorcycling passion. Today, engines and frames of the K100 are coveted by those who make cafe races or specials. We won't go into the merits of these choices, but we like to remember it as the bike that aroused curiosity and clamour in the early 1980s.